This is the second final night for Ching Chong Chinaman. And yes, it's that fun to say, so if you want to say it out loud, it's okay in this area. <laughs> then without, you know, any more hesitations, let's get this rock and roll show on the go. And thank you so much. You know what I love about America? Free speech. Free trade. Apple pie. Manifest destiny. Not a what, darling? The idea that we can conquer uncharted plains and retire to our homes and let other people with nothing better to do complete our dirty work. Dad, that is so not manifest destiny. It's just what Lincoln said about America, Desi. Lincoln was an anti-Semite. Semite means Jewish, Mona. Some of my best friends are Jewish. Didn't he free the slaves? Moses freed the slaves. Grace, Moses. Why do we need to do this now? Christmas isn't for another three months. I think Christmas is kind of racist. The KKK is racist. I don't like the KKK. I don't know what it is about them. Hey, Upton's making a face. Okay, everybody, one more shot for the Christmas card. Ching Chong Chinaman is a story of an Asian American family, and uh, it's a bit of a satirical comedy. So the son, Upton, who is a teenage kid, wants to uh, join the World of Warcraft tournament in, uh, in Seoul, Seoul, South Korea. And uh, he gets Don't in his head that, you know, he needs to spend... 25 hours a day practicing World of Warcraft. So he manages to bring over a Chinese refugee. Um, and the thing about this family, the Wong family, is that they don't speak any Chinese. In fact, they're not very Chinese at all. They're pretty white. And in comes this refugee, and uh, the refugee doesn't speak any English, doesn't know the culture, the American culture at all. And the family just doesn't speak, doesn't really understand this this foreigner in their midst. But they're all Chinese. That's a lot of cans here. Ma, it's for the homeless. And school. I'll just leave a can for um, can of cream corn for dinner tonight. Totally. Treat him with respect. Don't look at him. Don't make eye contact with him. Okay. I'm uh, really sorry. I'm speaking in a language that automatically marginalizes your intelligence and capabilities, but hi, I'm Desdemona, and Upton said you could help me out with something, so here it is. Uh, pages 225 to 229, all the odd ones. I've marked them out for you in case you don't understand, which you probably don't. Uh, if you can get that all done by tonight, that'd be great. And just for the record, I really don't approve of how my brother is treating you. Like, at all. Seriously. Mona? We're just getting cans. Hello, Ping Ping! It's Ching Chong. <laughs> which one? They're the same color. Are you sure they're Chinese? I, I don't know. It's not like we talk. Not everyone here speaks Chinese. They should. Shame on them. Once you become famous, you will never have to see this family again. Yeah, like that's gonna happen anytime soon. You cannot expect fame to just fall into your lap. You are auditioning for things, yes? Well, it's a little difficult when you only speak Chinese. I have always said dance is the universal language. You go in there and you dance. You could speak Martian and they would hire you. Look at the Russians. <laughs> can't be dancing when I'm always hungry. Just wait, Jing Quang. Keep practicing. It will come. So what did you call about? Yeah, so, um, if I wanted to add the integral of one to... That does not sound like dancing. Why are you doing math? Why do you think they wanted me here? You are terrible at math. I know! <laughs> <laughs> well, Ed is the, the patriarch of the family, and he's, like, typical... He bought into the American dream, and he's, like, a third-generation... Asian American, so he's totally, I wouldn't say whitewashed, but he's hes pretty white and, and uh, he's, his, his family is pretty white. They follow his lead. Um, he's an interesting character only because he's, he's a lot like my dad, uh, Ed, um, except my dad had a really big accent. He was actually an immigrant, but he, my dad aspired to be you know, living the American dream and being a huge entrepreneur and throwing money around and he's very bellicose and he worked the room every time he walked in a room and that's what Ed, what is, Ed that? is. He's he's one of those guys that 
um, Four? you like him immediately because he's just so <laughs> joie de vivre. Um, but one thing about Ed is, is he, he has no idea of his own culture. And in this play, he, he realizes that, you know, being, you know, quote unquote, whitewashed has helped him up to the, a certain point in his life. But he realizes that my wife, she's just not very good. It at really it. doesn't work for him, really. She can't on the work. surface, it does. She can't turn on a computer. Uh, but she can't cook. We're always ordering out. He really doesn't have a sense of identity. That's the way it is. That's the job of the daddies. And that's what I want. I want to make everyone happy. All right, everyone, be happy. Can we get a smile here? Come on. Come on, boss. Can we give you money? Money to make you happy? Uh, I want some money. Come on, dear. Here, come on. Play with the slinky. I broke it, Ed. It won't slink. We'll get Ching Chong to help fix it. OK, everyone, smiles right here. Great. Great. That was um, not so bad. This is my job. And I love it. I really do. You feel, as an Asian Canadian, sometimes you just feel alone out here. Um, you know, uh, what John has done is he has shown me he has gathered a bunch of like-minded individuals, artists, uh, from the same background, generally. I mean, we're all so really different people. That The one thing we have in common is this vague notion of a culture. Um, but he has brought us together, and, and I feel very empowered in that, in that there's... I don't have to fight this on my own anymore. I don't have to be in my own little silo, you know. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of people that think a lot like me about culture, about the wider majority, and about how, where will I find my place in that. This is a long time coming. What I have been wrestling with throughout my whole life um, about me forcing myself to become, well, white, to conform, and really whitewashing myself and really losing my own sense of self-identity and culture. Um, I see that it's, I haven't put, I have, I see that I have the ability to make a change um, through my art. Um, that's pretty powerful. Um, and I think with Ching Chong Chinaman, I think we can, we can literally open up people's eyes a little bit. And not only that, but God, if, if I would have saw this play 20 years ago, like who knows what would have happened for me.